yeah. what are you guys doing that's working for recruiting, training, mobilizing a huge, you know, uh, volunteer base? Well, let me let me say this: if um, if there are people that are watching this or listening to this and they're struggling to get as many volunteers as they would like, I want you to know something: you are not alone. Every church in America struggles with getting enough volunteers and if they say they don't they are lying they do every church in america does and that's just the nature of what we do so i've told our team we're never going to have a day where we go now we've got enough workers there's always going to be a gap between what we need and what we have uh, and so we just learn to be comfortable in that that's a tension to manage and it's not a problem to fix um so you know we do like a lot of churches do we have growth track and that's been a great pipeline for us to get people connected um, in our church, if you don't serve, you cannot be a member. So that's been effective in helping us because if you want to have a baby dedicated, if you want to get married in our church, if, I mean, you know, if you want to have a say, if you want to be able to teach, if you want to be able to be on the worship team, you have to be a member. And so those are all things that we just say, Hey, you don't, you don't have to become a member, but here's, here's what you get for being a member. Here's the benefit of us, you know, walking together in covenant. Uh, and so that's helped. But really, we never, ever, 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 ever do cattle calls from the stage where we go, hey, we need a bunch of workers for kids ministry, sign up, because what happens is the wrong people sign up for that. And so for us, um, our teams have just gotten real creative in, um, in, in how they invite people onto the team. And we never, you know, it's about our language. We never say things like, hey, you wouldn't want to help come change diapers in kids' ministry, would you? Because the answer is no, they would not want to help change diapers in kids' ministry. Uh, but what we do is we use language of, inclu uh, of inclusiveness and uh, community. And so we'll say things like, man, I love serving in kids. Why don't you come serve with me sometime? Come check it out sometime. Come serve alongside me. Because then we're inviting them into something. And so, you know, we've, we've done that. And some of our team members are do it really, really well. And some of them are still struggling with that a little bit. Um, you know, one of the things that I think some of our team members have done really well here is they haven't shied away from high capacity leaders. Um, so in your church, in my church, there are people that are super busy and we naturally go, well, they've got so much going on. They don't have time to serve. That's the natural response. But um, the, the highest level leaders in our organization are the ones that recognize busy people are the people we want serving. Because um, what we ha we do a lot of times is we we tend to staff to the faithfulness level of someone. Hey, they're here all the, every week. I know they'll show up, but as a result, that that department, that area is lacking. It's not as good as it could be. And so, some of our team, what they've done done really well is um, they've approached you know high level leaders in different businesses in our community that are part of our church and said, Hey, I would love for you to be a part of this. And and you know they'll cast vision for it because people that have accomplished a lot. Uh, and this is sound, going to sound terrible. They don't want to just hold a door. They want to be involved with something that matters. That's it's impactful. And so um, I've got high level leaders in our community that are involved in our church serving in different areas. And it's because our team members have said, Hey, I've got this area that you could really be effective in. Why don't you come alongside us? Why don't you serve in this? And they cast vision for it. They help them see the value and the importance of it. And, um, and they lay something down to be part of something that's to them more valuable. And so, it's at the end of the day, it's the numbers game uh, overall with volunteers. Um, if you need, if you need a hundred volunteers on a weekend, you better be asking 300. Um, and if you're not, you're going to be lucky to get a hundred. Uh, and so for us, you know, we've got, I don't know, 350 volunteers regularly, and then another 150 or 200 probably that serve a couple times a year. Um, and it's, it's constant work. It's constant maintenance. And so our teams just know, Hey, my job is not kids pastor. My job is not to minister to kids. My job is to minister to adults who minister to kids. And a major part of that is recruiting and development. Uh, that's just part of what it is. So even when we're hiring and we bring people on, we set good expectations for what we want, what we expect to see. And, um, and that's part of it. Uh, so I don't know if there's a magic answer there, but like, you know, growth track has helped, um, individual communication, you know, putting tools in, in our, in our team's hands to help them invite their friends, invite, you know, people that are interested in those areas, all that stuff is helpful, but there's not a magic bullet. Uh, there's no such thing. Yeah. So for those who aren't familiar with gro growth track, unpack that a little bit. Yeah. So, um, you know, Church of the Highlands, I think, is one of the originators of Growth Track um, and uh, all their resources are free on their website. And it's great. I mean, and they will help you. And so we've stolen a lot of stuff from Church of the Highlands. So Growth Track 
is four weeks. Uh, ours looks a little different than what Highlands does. For us, week one is kind of like Summit 101. Um, here's our vision. Here's our values. Here's what we're about. Here's why membership matters today. Because at our church, members don't vote on anything. The only thing members ever vote on is they ratify board members once a year. And they don't even get to pick board members. I tell them, here's who I would like. You get to say yes or no. And that's it. So at Summit, members 